الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله تعالى فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم في العالمين انك حميد مجيد We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and praise Him and we grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us another opportunity to come to His masjid, to come to the house of Allah, to come to pray. You know, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says when you go to the masjid, every single step you take, every single step is a good deed. Not only that, every single step wipes away a bad deed, a mistake that you've made. So alhamdulillah, it's a good chance for us to come for Allah to wipe away all our mistakes and raise our rank insha'Allah and give us more prizes in Jannah. Amen. Amen. So I, I seen the text saying that it's a school holiday. <laughs> so we'd like to do something for the school holiday and we've got so many mashallah young and bright future of Islam sitting right in front of me. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and bless your family and fill your life with happiness and success. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you well-being of the dunya and akhirah. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you the best of this life and the best of the after. Ask Allah to bless your families, bless your mom and dad and your brothers and sisters and make you, inshallah, good Muslim all the way along. So I didn't know what to, what to prepare and how to, to break this from a series of tafsir into a series of just uh, uh, quiz and stories and Dean for teen, as they say, just dean for the young people, and we're going to start as the the whole thing starts. It's a quiz. The Prophet Sallallahu was asked. Somebody came to him and said to him, "Can you tell us the who is the Prophet that was blind and why he got blind?" So the people come to the Prophet. He said, "I'm Prophet. I'm the Prophet." So they said, "Show us that you're a Prophet." In the history, there were hundreds of thousands of prophets. One of them, one of them was blind. Do you know who? The team, the young people. Do you know who was the blind prophet? Yes. Did you hear the answer? Okay, that's good. So, <laughs> who is the blind prophet? They asked about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The, the non-Muslim asked him, who is the blind prophet? Prove it to us and why he got blind. Do you know? Anyone know? Who's the blind prophet? Okay. Who's our prophet? <laughs> go to easy now. Who's our prophet? Muhammad. Muhammad. What's his name? His, if you see his name in the certificate, what's his name? First name is Muhammad, surname is? Ibn Abdullah. Ibn Abdullah. Ah, What's his mother's name? Siti Amina. Amina what? Bint Wahb. Amina bint Wahb. Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib. Ibn Hashim. Yeah, so we know everything about him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But do we, do we know his, his wife, the, the daughter of Abu Bakr? The Prophet's wife, the daughter of Abu Bakr, what's her name? Aisha. Aisha, well done. What is Abu Bakr's older daughter's name? Asma. Asma, yeah. Who's Asma husband? Ten dollars now. Zubair. Zubair. MashaAllah, he wants the ten dollars. What is the accountant? <laughs> you, yeah. Zubair, Zubair who? Another ten dollars? Bin al-Awwam. Zubair ibn al-Awwam. You only win once, yeah? So if you, <laughs> you answer, yeah. His name is Zubair ibn al-Awwam, radiyallahu anhu. Yeah, MashaAllah. So Asma. What is Asma famous for? His name of Allah. Name of Allah. No, what's her famous? Asma bint Abu Bakr, the daughter of Abu Bakr, the older daughter of Abu Bakr. She is very famous. She is huge. Why? She carried. Was she one of the first ladies to embrace Islam? No, she is famous for something else. She carried food for Abu Bakr and Rasulullah. She is the one that ripped her belt into halves. And she wrapped the food and carried up the mountain. You know how, how high? 
5,000 feet. And she was pregnant, delivering food to the Prophet ﷺ for three days because he was hiding in the cave in the Hijrah time. If she didn't supply food, he would have died from hunger. Yeah? Not only she supplied food, when the kuffar came to her house, she, you know, she was alone in the house. Her father, Abu Bakr, went with the Prophet ﷺ. And the leader of the disbeliever, Abu Jahl, he came to the house and he asked her, where is your father? You have to tell us, where is he? And she said, I don't know. And he's very rough. He, he slammed her in the face. He actually ripped the earring from her ear. And she still didn't tell him where they are, which way they were. And she knows exactly where they are. And she's a, a woman, yeah? so Asma, very famous. Yeah? The Prophet called her that in the Taqayn, the woman with the two belts. That in the Taqayn. Okay, so this is the type of quiz we're going to have in, in, the, in the family night. This is just a, our own dry quiz. We have a family night soon, inshallah, with hundreds of dollars prizes. So this is the same question. There's no more than that. Yeah. So what is the surah of the Quran that has two Bismillah Rahman Rahim? This is a very famous quiz. Yeah. There's a surah with two Bismillah Rahman Rahim. The surah in the Quran, it has Bismillah Rahman Rahim in the beginning, like every surah, and in the middle there is Bismillah Rahman Rahim also. Which surah is that? Mukhtar is thinking, but he's still got the $10. <laughs> we are just running a small quiz, warming up, and then we move into the story of the night. So, what surah of the Quran has two Bismillah Rahman Rahim in it? Sisters, you can say it. Surah, is it Surah Al-Bara? No. Surah Al-Bara doesn't have Bismillah. It doesn't have, yeah. It's Surah Al-Naml. Al-Naml. In Surah Al-Naml, it has a letter inside it. Inside the Surah, it says, Sulaiman sent a letter. And in the letter, he says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna Sulaiman, no, Bismillah ar It's in the middle of the Surah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Yeah? Excellent. What is... Where is the longest ayah in the Quran? The longest ayah, ayah. Remember the longest ayah in the Quran? Huh? It's Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah two hundred and fifty something. Fifty-five. Was that Ahmad? Yes, it's it's. Two fifty-five. No, two fifty-five is Atul Kursi. Two eighty-five. Fifty-two. I don't know the number. It is in Surah Al-Baqarah. Yeah, it is two eighty something. Maybe maybe two eighty-three. But it's a Surah Al-Baqarah. It's one page. One ayah, whole page. It's called Ayat Al-Mudayana. The one when you borrow money from people and all the, the, the condition for the contract. So you need to know that. What is the greatest Surah of the Quran? Come on, people who are not talking now. The greatest Surah of the Quran. Surah al I can hear you. One one two. One one two. Allah Qul Allah Wahad. No, Surah Al Fatiha. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen is the greatest Surah of the whole Quran. Everyone knows the greatest Surah of the Quran. Yes, yeah. yeah, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Surah uh, one one two. Surah Al Ikhlas. What is special about Surah Qul Allah Wahad? I think it pretty much summarizes the whole. One third. Like one third of the Quran in it. Excellent. So the Prophet said, if you read it, you get the word of the third of the Quran because it summarizes the whole message of the Quran. What is the last surah of the Quran? <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Nas, Nas. MashaAllah. Kul a'udhu bi rabbi nas. Well done. Okay. So, what was the surah revealed in Mecca? The first surah? Excellent. Iqra. Excellent. Where? Where was it revealed? In the cave Hira. Well done. So, I'll say, in the, inshallah, in a few weeks' time, we're going to plan it together. There's a family night. We're going to have a family night with prizes with first, second, and third, and fourth, all the 10 prizes for the... Yeah, you remember we did it last time? Inshallah, we'll have it soon also. Yeah? So this quiz will be coming back to Newlands. What is Abu Huraira's? Do you know Abu Huraira? Yeah. What's his name? <laughs> <laughs> this is his nickname. He's famous for Abu Huraira. But what's his real name and the ID? Abdul Rahman. His name is Abdul Rahman. <laughs> Abdul Rahman ibn Sakhab. Yeah. I didn't say him, I said your name. <laughs> yeah? So, he's, 
Immer wenn es Abu Huraira, Abu Huraira, Abu Huraira, but actually his real name is Abu Rahman ibn Khakhr, MashaAllah, MashaAllah. How many prophets mentioned in the Quran? No, no, how many prophets mentioned in the Quran? 25. There's 25 names mentioned in the Quran. Yeah? What is the only woman mentioned in the Quran by name? Maryam. Maryam. The only woman. How many times the name Muhammad mentioned in the Quran? One. Five. Four. Four, four. sorry. Four. Four times the name Muhammad وسلم, mentioned in the Quran. Yeah? yeah? What is the surah of the Quran by the name of the Prophet? Surah Muhammad. Yeah, but the, another prophet. Yusuf. Oh. Yusuf. Ibrahim. Yusuf. Yusuf. Yunus. Yeah? Yunus. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's lots of surah, yeah? yeah. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. Okay? So these are the kind of question that comes in quiz. The shortest surah of the Quran? Surah Al Kawthar. Excellent. The greatest ayah. The greatest ayah. Remember the greatest surah? Al Fatiha, Alhamdulillah. The greatest ayah? Al Kursi, which is 255 Al Baqarah. Yeah? Surah Al MashaAllah. So what, we started by the question that people say to the Prophet, Your Prophet? Your real Prophet? Tell us who is the blind Prophet. So the Prophet وسلم, told them, not only the blind Prophet, he told them the entire story. I think it's the father of Benjamin. <coughs> Yeah, the father of Prophet Yusuf. Father of Prophet Yusuf, yes. And Benjamin. Yeah. And Benjamin, yes. Yeah. But famous for Yusuf, Surat Yusuf. So they ask him, who is he? said, Yaqub. Yaqub is the son of Isaac, Ishaq. Ishaq is son of Ibrahim. You know Prophet Ibrahim? And the son, his name is Ishaq. The son, his name is Yaqub. The son, his name is Yusuf. Not only Yusuf, he had 12 boys. Twelve boys. One of them is Yusuf, one of them is Binyamin, and ten others. Yeah? Only Yusuf is mentioned in the Quran. Binyamin is not mentioned. He's called his brother. So the story I'm gonna share with you tonight is the story of Yusuf because he was your age. Maybe ten, eleven. Yeah? So he was young boy. And Allah begins by him. Normally, prophets know how to interpret dreams. Prophets, when they see a vision, when they see a dream, they tell you. They interpret. Allah revealed to them the meaning of the dream. But for a, for a boy to interpret the dream, that's amazing. Yusuf والسلام, had a dream. The boy had a dream. And he woke up, ran to his father. And he's just giving his father a big hug and says, what? Me? I saw the dream, not you. It's like that. He's just telling his father, what's wrong? I am seeing the dream that you're supposed to see. You are the prophet. But he doesn't know that Allah also chose him to be a prophet. He saw a huge dream. You see stars, the sun, the moon prostrating for him. What does his father say? His father just hug him and encourage him and tell him, Allah has chosen you. You are very bright, you're going to have a great future, you're going to inherit the same heritage of your great-grandfathers, Ibrahim and Ishaan. You've been chosen for your character, you've been chosen for your morals, for your ethics, for your values. See, so there's lessons. The boy himself run to his father and share with his father, because all the boys here, I'm sure, you have secrets that your father don't know anything about. But this boy, in the beginning of the surah, he goes and shares with his father even the dream. And his father, he's encouraging him and proud of him for a dream. It's nothing. He didn't do anything. But that's the relationship that Allah is telling us to have. The Prophet Sallallahu said to the boys, Anta wa maluka milka abik. You and everything you own is a property of your father. Like it or not, your father don't have to ask you. You and whatever you own, 
belong to your father. That's, that's a fact you can't, we can't deny. If it was not for our father, we wouldn't exist here. So it is, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decision to make you who you are, to make your father who you are. So if you like your father or not, it's a test from Allah. If you like your son or not, it's a test from Allah. Fathers have to be very patient with the kids and patient has to be very obedient and kind to the fathers. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us, nothing less. And you know what? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah's pleasure, Allah's pleasure is conditional on your father's pleasure. If your father is not happy with you, you are in deep trouble. Even if your father is non-Muslim, even if your father is idol worshippers, we are commanded to respect them so much and to obey them, no condition, no question asked. So back to the story, Yusuf ran to his father and his father gives him a hug and told him the dream, but the father gets very, very, very worried. He says, you've got ten brothers that they're very jealous of you. They're not going to like it. They're not going to like that you are smart, you are intelligent, you are you know, chosen by Allah, they're going to plan something bad for you. So keep it a secret. He told him, La taqsus ro'yaka ala ikhwatika. Don't tell this to your brothers. But you know what? Benjamin, that Fakhri mentioned, he was a baby, he was young. Three years old, toddler man. And he heard that talk. And he rushed outside, telling Yusuf saw a dream, Yusuf saw a dream. And who heard it? All the other one, and they said, let's, get, let's meet. And they gathered together, and they said, what? Look how crazy they are. They said, our father's attention is gone for this one brother. We can't even, you know, have him for ourselves. We need to kill Yusuf. <laughs> That's what they thought. Kill Yusuf so we can have our father's love back. What a crazy idea. If you kill Yusuf, you will lose your father forever. But Shaitan can decorate things for human, can make you convinced, oh, if you have that, you will be okay. No, you can't be okay building and wrong. You're building stuff and wrong, it will fall down. So the Shaitan come to them and say to them, get rid of Yusuf, your father will be free for you. <laughs> and they plan the plan. And they gone to the father and said to him, Father, why don't you trust us to, you know, and give us Yusuf to play with us? Why you never send him with us to play? He will have good time. He will eat a lot. He will just enjoy. We are strong. We will look after him. The father said, <laughs> it's, It saddens me. It makes me so sad that you're going to take him and He's going to be lost. He's going to be eaten by the wolf, by the wild animals. And you won't be taking care of him. Oh, we're strong. A wolf will attack him. We're, we're ten of us. Mm, we're not that losers. We're strong. Give him to us. And they kept on trying and trying and trying again till the father gave in. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, <coughs> Allah knows their plan, and Allah revealed to the Father, and revealed to Yusuf, I will keep an eye on you. They have a plan, but Allah also has a plan. Ten of them took Yusuf the story, the Quran doesn't go into the detail, but the tafsir said that the, 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 in the way to, to play, they actually planned to go into the jungle, and they, they can't water it down. They disagreed, don't kill him, just take him, throw him in the jungle. We don't, we don't kill him ourselves. Maybe, hopefully, the caravan, the travelers, will pick him up. And that's how we get rid of him, and we're clear conscious we didn't kill him. That's also another thing that shaitan tricks people. Wishful thinking. You know, hopefully, the caravan will pass by. So the person will be making haram decisions, wrong decision, and in their head, hopefully one day I'll be okay. Hopefully my father will know about it. Hopefully my mother will know about it. Hopefully, and before they know it, they're addicted to drugs or 
the guy won the game or the, the you know, the, the coat shoplifting, some big problem that happened to a good boy from a good family or a good girl from a good family. So that's the steps that Allah is advising us from it. Be careful, consult the good people, be in the company of good people. Don't rely on just to wishful thinking. Maybe this one. No, no, you don't have to say maybe or may, not maybe. Just if your father, if your mother, if the teacher are telling you this is the right thing to do, don't go there, don't be with these people, finish. You listen and follow the advice. So the brother of Yusuf took him and threw him in a, in a dry well in the, in the forest somewhere where nobody normally passes by. And he got the, his dress, had a fake blood on it, ran back home crying, pretending to cry. Crying in front of the father. You listen to what they say, you just be amazed. The camera, you know, the Quran is like a camera moving from the father's discussion to the boys together to Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. So that was the camera on them crying and pretending. And say to the father, we went racing, we were racing each other running, and we left Yusuf looking after our staff. And the wolf came and ate him, as you expected. We know that you will never believe us, even if we're saying the truth. Look what they say. They say to the father, we know that you won't, you won't believe us, even if we are saying the truth. <laughs> this, in, in the ayah, they say we are lying. You know, even if we are saying the truth, you won't believe us. They admit it by just their own tongue that they are making up. What they are saying is not true. The father, in this situation, teaching us all again. Every single ayah in this surah is a lesson. The father did not reply, did not argue, did not yell. Look, the father yesterday, he was jumping up and down with joy. His son is being chosen. His son is a genius. His son is interpreting a dream. His son is, in, is going to be son, a leader. Now he's lost. He doesn't even know where he is. They tell him, the wolf awaited him, where? We don't know. So at least if you know that your loved one somewhere, you know, at least you know. But this one, he doesn't even know what happened to his loved son, his young son. So he doesn't respond and reply and fight and yell and shout. He just said two words. He says, for sabr on jami. He says, in this situation, I need beautiful patience. What is beautiful patience? I'm poor. What is beautiful patience? Is to accept what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives me and think that Allah showed me with so many other blessings that poverty is nothing compared to my eyesight, is nothing compared to my sleep, is nothing to compare to my the kids are happy, is nothing compared to my, you know, my family are Muslim, is nothing compared to there's millions of other good things that I have. Yes, I don't have money, I don't have job, but I'm not in Syria, I'm not in Iraq, I'm not in Libya, I'm not you know, to all these things are happening all the time. So, the father said, Sabr, patience, but not, not animal patient. You know, the animal has patience. You put them in the, in the cage, what can they do? They just roam around inside the cage. They can't wait to get out. That's patience, but this is not beautiful patience. You, can, you, you tell the kids, turn the thing off. You know, stop that game. They might have patience, but they're grumpy all day, stamping their feet and blowing, you know. That's not beautiful patience. Beautiful patience is not to say something that anger Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to accept this idea, Allah, you know better. Allah, you will control. So the father says to them, I lost my, my beautiful child, but my trust in Allah, I know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will look after him. فَصَبْرٌ جَمِيلٌ How you achieve this? Wallahu al-musta'a. He, he carries on. He says, Allah, He's the only one who will help you out. Nobody can help you in this situation. The camera moved quickly back to Yusuf. Yusuf in the, in the well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent travelers specially for him. Travelers that never passed this way. They travel through this way. And they send one of them to look for water. This was in the old days traveler. The caravan sits at him. 
they start to cook some food, they send somebody to get some firewood, somebody to get some water, somebody to, yeah. And he goes in, and what he find? He find the most beautiful boy on the planet. They say, Yusuf, Yusuf, السلام, the Prophet described him, he said he got half the beauty of mankind. <laughs> Think of all the superstars and all this Hollywood, you know, glamour magazines and movies and billions of dollars industry. They, nothing compared to Yusuf Not only handsome man, he is so intelligent, so wise, so polite, every perfect in everything. When the waterman find him, he just jump in the air. He says, Yeah, Bushra, good news come to me, he says. <laughs> He's calling the good news, success, come to me. It is not water, Hada Ghulam, young boy. But straight away goes to criminal mind. Something to sell. He's not honest. He's, a, he's not saying I'm going to look for his family. He said, I'm going to sell him in the market. <laughs> we'll make a good money for us. See the trouble? One of the best human beings, Yusuf. Look at the trouble. His, father, his brother's planning to kill him. He gets thrown in the forest. Now he will be sold as a slave. They didn't put him with the people in the caravan, they put him with the goods. With all the wood and the corn and the stuff, and they hide him, concealed him secretly. We quickly moved away from the area. And they moved to Egypt. You know, stolen goods. When someone steals something, they don't know the value. They just want to get rid of it. You know? They don't know that this is an iPhone, $700, $800. They will sell it for $100. And you know, if it is too good to be true, it is too good to be true. You know that this is stolen. So they did the same for Yusuf. Yusuf is worth the world. But these people, Allah says, وَشَرَوْهُ بِثَمَنٍ بَخْسٍ They just tried to get rid of him. They just sold him very cheap. وَكَانُوا فِيهِ مِنَ الزَّاهِدِينَ They didn't even bargain. How much? Twenty dollars? Take it. <laughs> so they quickly sold him. They were worried that they may get caught or questioned where he got him from, who is he. And so they sold him to Egypt. At the time, this we're talking about maybe 10,000 years ago, there was market for human being. Market for human being. And you go and buy human being from there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us, inshallah, save our freedom. Yeah? So, a man coming from his office, he bought Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. Who's planning this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Allah wants Yusuf to be a leader. How you become a leader unless you're sitting with the leaders? Unless you hear the leaders? Unless you see how they deal, how they, you know, they make the conferences, how they do the meeting, how they do the businesses? Allah takes Yusuf from the desert where his family is from, make him sold to the minister in Egypt to live in the palace so he can see how the deals are done, how politics are done. And Allah has already prepared him. He is a genius boy. Now he will listen and interpret. Not only dream, al-ahadith, all the planning, all the strategy that government and armies and royal family put together, Yusuf was put in the middle of it. But look at the ayah. Allah says, well, the guy from Egypt bought him, took him home. He says to his, straight up, the first thing he says to his wife, Akrimi mathwahu, asa ayyam fa'ana, aw nattakhidahu walada. He goes to his wife and she is like a queen and says, honor him. What? He's a slave. He just bought him in the market. He says, honor him. Prepare a long-term stay for him. Mathwahu. He will stay with us for a long time. Hopefully, he will benefit us. Hopefully, we will become like one of the family. Why? How did he know? 
in, in, in an hour or two How hours, you know journey? that this boy has future. We need him to be one of the royal family. He's not a slave. He's not a worker. He's not a laborer. You can read between the line the way Yusuf spoke to him, the way Yusuf behaved in the traffic, the way Yusuf behaved in the journey. Going, he just impressed the man so much that he goes home and tells his wife, "That is not normal. You have to honor him." Now Yusuf will learn about the royal families, about the government, about the ministers, and also you can't learn from the good side only. You need to see the corruption. You need to see how the bad class of people are dealing. The woman is acting that role. <laughs> the wife of Al-Aziz, she is the corrupt element. And Yusuf will learn how to protect himself from the corruption. How to protect himself. How, who are they? How they deal with what kind of party? What kind of talk? What kind of gossip they are dealing with? So Yusuf والسلام, now in the palace. And this woman, you know, politician, busy 20 hours, maybe 24 hours, maybe the whole year. So this bad woman inside, she sees this very, very strong, handsome, genius young boy, and she starts to have bad thought in her head. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَرَاوَدَتْهُ الَّتِي هُوَ فِي بَيْتِهَا عَن نَفْسِهِ She tried every trick in the book, to make him slip of his own standard. He put a standard for himself. He put a standard for himself. He says, I am not going to cheat. I am not going to do this filth. I am not going to look at that. I am not going to touch that. That's my standard. If you like me, you sincere my friend. You can join me in that standard. If you force me to lower my standard, to watch those pictures, or to watch this movie, or to listen to this music, or to have... Now I am not my friend. You want me to go down. You see, that's what Yusuf is teaching all of us. You set for yourself a standard. I am a Muslim. I don't do this. And you draw a rectangle around yourself. That's me. I don't attend those parties. I don't watch those things. I don't say those things. I don't read those magazines. I don't watch this thing. That's what easy. If someone sincere and he likes you for who you are, respect for who you are, most welcome. Because Muslims are not enemy to man. We are absolutely, we, we respect every human being. But we don't want to lose our faith and our morals and our values and our belief just to, just to be included, just to be part of the team. We're losing ourselves. We're not, it's not us when we become in the group. So Yusuf is teaching us that you keep your standard, even if the pressure, like this woman pressure, this, he was not in the streets, he was in her house. She is the boss. He can't hide, she has access to every room. He is a slave, he's not a royal family. And she's what? She is trying. Rawadat would means on and on, non-stop. Non-stop, and there is no man in the house. Till the, till the day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and she said وَقَالَتْ هِئْتَلَكْ and she said do what I'm telling you she thrown herself at him you know what he did the Quran said فَاسْتَبَقَ الباب. he ran to the door he ran away he ran away from it He's not like any of us who will stand in there and say, but that's haram, but you can do this, but let me... No, 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 no. There's no time to talk, there's no time to discuss. These are evil, and you have to run from the situation. That's Yusuf is teaching us. The only way is to turn the channel off. The only way is to burn the magazine. The only way is to wipe the app. It's the only way. You can't have the app on the mobile and says, inshallah, we're a No, no, you can't control yourself. You can't control your desires. You have to wipe it away. Yusuf ran away. She, she have locked all the doors. Every door has locks in it. She have made sure that every lock is closed. When he ran to the door, she runs after him and grabs him from the back. At that moment, the doors open. And her relative comes in with the minister, her husband. 
And straight away, she switches side. She straight away, she crosses, he's trying to attack me, he's trying. <laughs> he says, subhanAllah, I'm running away from it. Her relative, her relative, he says, I will help out. Let's look at his clothes. If his clothes is ripped from the back, she's a liar. She's attacking him. If his clothes is ripped from the front, he's a liar. He's attacking her. His clothes was ripped from the back. She was pulling him from the back. You know the politician, what they will say? What this man said in the surah. He says to his wife, just leave him alone. There's no talk. <laughs> no blame. He didn't say anything to her. He, he knows now what's going on in his own house. And he says to her, leave him alone. She didn't leave him alone. Inshallah, next week we continue because the story gets more interesting. This is the surah that the Prophet ﷺ to answer the question, who is the blind prophet? Amazing lessons in every ayah of this surah, Surah Yusuf. I advise you, inshallah, to go and read it. It's a beautiful surah. Or listen to it even. It's much more beautiful to listen to. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and protect our family, protect our young ones, protect our children from all the desires and the evil thing that goes on in this world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us as a good Muslim and protect our business, our honor, our dignity and make us inshallah the best Muslim. Make us inshallah in the company of Yusuf alayhi salatu wassalam. Jazakumullah khair.